So you want me to shut the door? So this will be the most the most formal okay. aspect of it, and I'll well like to be able to do the introduction. Okay. So, I'm here today with Myung Hee Chung, uh, professor at UW Whitewater and professor in the piano studio. Thank you so much for sitting down. To interview. You're welcome. Um, okay. So, you know, I'll do some editing, and I guess I I, I know that you came from South Korea. Yes, from correct? South Korea. Yes. And. Was that was your first experience traveling to the United States um, when you won that when you won the piano competition for the young composers competition with the Chicago Symphony? Was that your first? No, that was after I I've, I've been here for two years. Oh, was it? Okay. Yes, I came here well, um, 1974, uh, and I, as a high school student. Okay, what year in high school was that? Was your well, I. Well, in Korea, the semester starts from March, so I finished the first semester. And then when I came here in August, uh, I started the uh, 11th grade again. Okay. So you know, I kind of repeated the first half, first semester of 11th grade. Okay. Um, you know, that's probably uh, very common because you don't want, you can't, you don't want to skip a grade because you have, uh, because of the language barrier, not because of the academic um, you know, placement. So uh, I went to high school. I was in uh, Illinois State University High School in Normal, Illinois. And uh, I came here to study piano, really. Um, and I was taking piano lessons from the professor from uh, Illinois State University. So uh, I went to high school and took piano lessons. Um, and I won the competition that's at the end of, well, it, in May of 1976, uh, when I was graduating from high school, mm -hmm. and then I went to Juilliard. Mm -hmm. And the performance was actually a year later. The winner's concert was a year later with the uh, full orchestra you know, during the daytime concert. So I came back to Chicago in, uh, I don't remember the exact date, but sometime, you know, 1977. A year later. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when you were in high school, did you come here for the 11th grade and then did you stay here? Or did you, in the summers, go back to South Korea? Oh, no. I didn't go to go back to Korea for four years. Oh, okay. At that time, uh, not only airfare was very expensive, um, you know, I didn't even think about going home. <clears throat> and also, at that time, the calling international, making an international phone call was out of question. I mean, not that it was impossible, but it just was enormous, enormously expensive and you didn't even think about it. So we uh, communicated with just the letters. So it, it took, what, about 10 days to two weeks for the letter to arrive and vice versa. Okay. Yeah. Did yeah. you have a lot of family back home? Yes, I came then? here by myself yeah. uh, as an international student. Okay. Right? So all my family members were in, in back home in Korea. And I went back to Korea four years later, uh, was the summer of 1978. You know, that was my first time visit. Okay, you know. after you had already been in Juilliard for a year? For, for two years. For two years. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so that's how I came. And then, uh, so what would you like to know? Did you study English um, before you yes, in, in Korea, States. South Korea, it's um, mandatory. Well, it's a requirement that you start English at, at the seventh grade. Oh. Uh, their junior high school, it's a little bit different. The elementary school is from grade one through six. And then junior high is from seven through nine. Senior high is from 10 to 12. So it's a six three three years of um, education. So at the seventh grade, we start learning English. So I. So I guess that meant I studied English for like four and a half years, well, four years and a half you know, semester. But when you learn language in Korea at the time, we concentrated on grammar and kind of reading books. Conversation, even though we're supposed to have studied it, it wasn't really a main thing. Okay. So when I first came, um, I mean, even though I studied extra you know, kind of classes for English, um, etc. It took about a year to really 
understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so until then, I received a lot of help. The family I stayed with, uh, uh, Mrs. Crum, the Crummies, the Mrs. Crummies was actually, um, she was, I, I don't remember the exact title, but some type of uh, international student advisor capacity. Uh, it's like advice for international students or coordinator for international students you know, uh, at ISU. So she had uh, dealt with many foreign students for college. Um, so she helped, helped me with English. She taught me you know, every day after school. Um, I asked her and she helped me to pronounce things you know, in a correct way. Um, and you know, it really, there was a lot of work involved um, because of the language barrier. Yeah. The easiest class was math. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I was good at math and I liked math, and then I went into uh, whatever the 11th grade math was at the time. And actually, all the stuff they were doing was, which I did in the 9th grade already. Oh, okay. So it was much easier. But then, then I still kind of had to understand how they figure out you know, when there was the language involved. You know, it's not always the numbers. Yeah, so, exactly. So that I learned how to do it. And, um, you know, the English class, I had a tutor assigned to me um, from the university. Okay. So I worked with the tutor you know, just to catch up with the English class. Yeah. When, when, when you said, or when would you say you became fluent? actually in English? Um, I think it took about a year to understand actually what people are saying. So if I didn't understand because I didn't know that word, no, not that, uh, um, because I didn't know the word, the vocabulary, so then I can look up the word exactly. Um, so it took about a year to really understand, well, for I would say for my ears to open, oh. so I can hear what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then if I didn't know the word, then I mean, then I had to look it up. You know, yeah. I didn't understand because I didn't know what the word meant. So, but it, I think it took about a year. Okay. Yeah. And um, what was your primary language? Was it Mandarin? No, it's Korean. Korean, South Korean. Yes. Well, Korean, Korean is Korean. 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 Okay. It's divided to North uh, and South Korea in 1953. Well, actually. Uh, actually in 1945, um, you know, but until then it was one country. So yeah, that's okay. it's just one language. Now it's a little bit different, you know, because so much separation. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, um, that's all really helpful. Um, for, I think maybe since this is oriented towards secondary education, so we'll, we'll not touch college yet, but focus more on the high school setting. Mm -hmm. in, when you you said it, take, it took you a year, um, your ears open up for you right. to, to really be fluent. Okay, slowly it was getting better, but then really, you know, after a year, then I could understand what people are talking. Did you have friends who also spoke Korean at high school, or were you no. one of your own? Uh, I, I mean, there were some other Koreans. Um, Yes, there was one Korean who went to high school. And I cannot remember whether it was the fourth year or just one year. Uh, but we didn't speak Korean that much. The only time I spoke Korean was maybe after practicing piano for like very briefly. You know. And it's not really extensive conversation or anything. Mm -hmm. Because the family I stayed with, um, no, I, I mean, no, they had, not that I would go away or anything, but after school then I would go to the university to practice piano, and then they would uh, pick me up after I'm done. No. Uh, and then I would stay home. So I really didn't have much interaction, and the classes were different. So yes, I would um, see the Korean girl like during the piano class we had like once a week on Saturday. But then we were talking about uh, piano and the professor 
was talking in English, so maybe afterwards they said, well, what did you think or something, but it was very little. Okay. So I wasn't totally not speaking Korean, but very little, I have to say. Okay. So it was, I was totally immersed in English, not that, uh, you know, not like a, uh, you know, it's like almost like a baby. Uh, so even though I didn't understand what was, like, what they were talking, um, but I was in the vicinity, I mean, I was like hearing English all the time. And then if I asked, then they would speak slowly at home. And or repeat or explain it to me. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's different. Sure. So because of that, when you moved, or I'm sorry, not moved, but visited your family in Korea after four years, did you feel like you lost some of your Korean? No, because no. I was too old. I mean, I was okay. old enough, I was in high school when I came here, so I didn't really lose it. Okay. I, I think it would have been different if I came here at a much younger age. Yeah. Okay, sure. So that's like and was it the same as, as in high school when you went to college that you didn't have many Korean-speaking friends? Or did Actually, at Juliet, there were, much more, there were many more Koreans there, oh, okay. and I sp spoke Korean probably much more so. But then I realized um, the family who came from Korea as a family and stayed together as a family, and the, the students who went to high school uh, and then came to Julia. I was comparing myself to those you know, girls who were with the family, and I realized that their English was not as fluent as mine, just simply because I was forced to hear and speak English for all those two years. And their exposed to English was only at school during the class, which they didn't really have to speak that much. And then when they went home, they were you know, immersed in Korean. So their contact with English was not that much, so to speak, and okay. it was not as intense. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah, that makes sense. Um, we, we've, done, we've looked at studies, you know, of similar situations, and that's always the outcome. Um, oh, um, I think going back, um, yeah, to high school. What were some of the accommodations that your music classes had or your piano lessons had for you to better, I don't know, facilitate learning piano and at the same time learning another language? Was um, well, the high school I went to, well, the, the U High, University High, they, I think it was, um, I was like an exception to the normal student body, so they had a tutor assigned, and then they're helping me to like, get, um, cope with the English situation. The first year and the second year became much better. But it was separate from really the piano situation because I was taking lessons from the university professor, and I went to the university to practice. Um, and there all the, his students were the college students from Illinois uh, State University. So really that's, they, those two don't really mix together. It was kind of separate issue. Oh. I came here as, uh, to, to study piano, and then, but still because I was a high school student, I had to go to um, high school. Mm. And the piano teacher, even though he's from Korean background, I mean, he was born in Korea, but he is one of those who came here at a very young age. And so his Korean was not that great. Um, he's English, he's much more comfortable with English. So, and he was purposely talking to me in English um, so that I would get used to it. So, uh, it's only unless I really didn't understand that he would speak in so I don't know if learning a second language has has a much direct effect to like learning piano. Okay. It's hard for me to correlate. No, that's okay. Like, um, yeah, that's that's a, a perfect answer. I mean, if if it didn't, it didn't. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, I had to learn English because I was here as a student and I have to survive and I have to go to school and all that. But um, when, when I uh, play the piano, I'm not thinking in terms of language. Yeah. It's like, it's like math. You said math was translatable yes. between. Yes. Yeah. And then also, I'm thinking in terms of numbers. No, I'm not. And the only thing I still count, um, do it in Korean, is when I count. That's much more like comfortable oh, really? in Korean counting. Adding, um, especially the timetable, that kind of comes very quickly in Korean. It's a language thing too. It's much faster because only one syllable for each number, rather than three. It's like yeah, yeah. long. Yeah. Seven is small. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so it that's the only time I, you know, if I really count, then want to count, not all the time, but it's, you know, a lot of times I do count. Okay. So I teach in English, you know, when I count for students, I do count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I think, yeah, I think that's all really great. Okay. I, I don't, you know, have any more questions. I was wondering, though, um, I know you have a bunch of different recordings of yourself mm -hmm. out there. Is there anything that's pretty easily available? Do you have a, like, a favorite, you know, thing that's up on Naxos, maybe, that I could access? Oh, no. Um, I mean, you know, AMC would have all kinds of uh, recordings that I've been here almost like 20 years now. So Next year is 20 years, so all the recitals. Yeah, just, to, oh, yeah, that's a yeah. good point. I can use yeah. a campus recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, um, no, I, it's not for Nexus, um, but, you know, even the Gershwin, uh, I probably Dr. Hayes will have some of the, um, our trip to uh, Chicago. Yeah. No, probably. I know they recorded it. Yeah, I heard they got they sent to the Green Bay on accident. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Yeah, they sent it to Green Bay. Oh, I didn't know that. But I guess if it's coming, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure I have a copy and then that will be accessible too. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop this recording. So did you have a long day because you have to push back things this afternoon? Uh